The P-38, or the Forktail Devil as German pilots called it, was a unique fighter in World War II. Though it's not as well known to the general public as the P-51 or the Spitfire, it had a big role in winning the war in various roles. So let's take a look at its history, starting with the plane's origins and its development. Lockheed designed the P-38 in 1937 for an Army Air Corps specification for a twin-engined high-altitude interceptor. The specifications asked for a maximum speed of at least 360 miles an hour and a climb rate of 20,000 feet in 6 minutes. Lockheed set up a team to work on the project, led by Hall Hibbert and Kelly Johnson. Johnson immediately considered a twin-engine fighter, as a single-engine plane would have difficulties meeting the requirements. After considering several different designs, they came up with the final one, which was rare at the time, with the twin booms accommodating the engines and turbo superchargers and the central nacelle for the pilot and armament. In the early versions, they experimented with many different variations of armament. 250 caliber and 230 caliber machine guns were tried on the mock-up, also 23 and 37 mm autocannons were considered. The plane featured a tricycle undercarriage and a bubble canopy, giving great visibility to the pilot. The two engines were used with counter-rotating propellers to eliminate the engine torque effects on the plane. Lockheed's P-38 won the competition in 23rd of June 1938 and got a contract for a prototype. The work on the prototype started in July 1938 and the first flight of the XP-38 took place in January 1939. This prototype actually set a speed record by flying from California to New York in 7 hours and 2 minutes. The Air Corps ordered 13 planes, designated YP-38, in April 1939. These were only delivered between September 1940 and June 1941 due to various redesigns and problems with setting up the mass production. The YP-38 was lighter than the XP-38 and the propeller rotations were reversed. The Air Corps also ordered 66 production P-38 Lightnings. These were mainly used for experimenting with different modifications and to try out several different gun configurations. They were upgraded with self-sealing fuel tanks, armored cockpit and other modifications. But at this time there were still quite a few problems that had to be solved affecting the P-38 flight characteristics. The plane suffered from quite bad high-speed compression. During high-speed dives, the tail suffered from flutter and the control surfaces locked up. This was a problem that took the engineers a long time to fix. First, Lockheed engineers tried spring-loaded servos to help the pilot move the control surfaces, but this didn't help the problem. Then they tried to strengthen the tail section to tackle the fluttering, but this again didn't have an effect on the vibrations. Finally, they found the solution in 1943 after extensive wind tunnel testing. It was revealed that in high-speed dive the center of the pressure moved towards the tail. The engineers finally fixed this by installing dive flaps which affected the pressure on the wings in a high-speed dive. Another problem of the P-38 was coming from its twin engine design and outward rotating propellers. This setup gave the plane greater stability, but in the case of losing an engine it proved dangerous. The normal procedure on a twin-engine aircraft in case of losing an engine was to push the remaining engine to maximum power to compensate for the loss of performance. But in a P-38 this proved to be lethal, sending the plane in an uncontrolled spin. New procedures had to be taught to P-38 pilots. In case of losing an engine, they first had to reduce performance on the intact engine and after they stabilized the plane, slowly increase the power again. Now let's take a look at the technical specifications. Armament 450 caliber machine guns, 1 20 mm Hispano cannon. Unlike most US planes which had wing mounted guns, the P 38 had all the guns in the center nacelle, so gun convergence wasn't a problem. Interesting fact that because the 20 mm cannon have heavier rounds, the cannon itself was installed pointing slightly upwards, so the cannon and machine gun rounds converged somewhere around 400 meters in front of the aircraft. The P-38 could carry a lot of suspended weaponry, and this made it a very capable fighter bomber as well. It was able to carry a total of 4,000 pounds of bombs. For a comparison, the B-17 heavy bomber's long-range bomb load was only 4,800 pounds. The P-38 could carry either two 2,000 pound bombs, or two 1,000 pound bombs, plus four 500 pound bombs, or six 500 pound bombs. 
power plant and performance. Engines 2 Ellison V1710 liquid cooled engine, producing 1600 horsepower each. Maximum speed 414 miles an hour at 25,000 feet. Cruise speed 275 miles an hour. Range 1300 miles. Service ceiling 44,000 feet. Now let's take a look at the P38 variants. XP38, the first prototype. YP38, first pre production models. P38, first production variant. This variant featured 50 caliber machine guns and a 37mm cannon. XP38A, experimental model with pressurized cockpit. P38B and C, these were not built as production jumped to the D model. P38D, this model featured a modified tail and self sealing fuel tanks. P38E, the E model featured the 20mm cannon rather than the 37mm. P38F, this model featured the underwing racks for bombs or drop tanks. P38G, this featured modified radio equipment. P38H, featuring bigger bomb load and improved intercooler. P38J, the J model featured many improvements, including higher output engines, chin radiators and flat bulletproof windshields. P38K, this version was equipped with more powerful 1400 horsepower engines and larger propellers, but it didn't go to production. P38L, the L model received the most powerful 1600 horsepower engines. TP38L, trainer version. P38M, radar equipped night fighter version. F4 and 5 versions, reconnaissance planes built from the different variants of the P38. Now let's take a look at the P38's combat history. The first P38s in active service were the F4 reconnaissance versions deployed in Australia in 1942. Later, the P38 was put to good use in the Pacific, where it suited the task well with its long range. It was mainly used for bomber escort, but could fill other roles as well. Though it wasn't as agile as the Japanese fighters, the P38's superior speed and climb rate allowed it to choose how to engage the enemy aircraft. Also, its heavy armament, especially the 20mm cannon, proved deadly against the lightly armored Japanese planes. The most notable action the P-38 was involved in the Pacific is downing the plane carrying Admiral Yamamoto. On 18th of April 1943, 16 P-38 fighters were sent to locate Yamamoto's plane after US codebreakers intercepted a message that he will be flying to Bougainville Island for a frontline inspection. The P-38 fighters flew more than 400 miles at low altitude to avoid detection. They managed to intercept the two G4M Betty bombers and escorting Zero fighters near the island and managed to shoot them down, losing only one P-38. The P-38s appeared in Europe and the Mediterranean in late 1942 and their first assignments were in North Africa. They were mainly used as bomber escorts and sometimes in ground attack roles. Overall, the P-38s did well here, but suffered many losses, mainly because inexperience and the teething problems of the plane, particularly the inability to dive because of the high-speed compression, which was only sorted in 1943. Many planes were lost because of bad tactics as well, as the doctrine at the time was the bomber escorts need to fly close to the bombers, but this way they were vulnerable to the attacking German fighters. In Western Europe, the P-38 was mainly used as a long-range bomber escort, and it fit this role well, thanks to the plane's excellent high altitude performance and long range. It was also used as a fighter bomber, providing air cover for troops, attacking enemy armor and installations. Later in the war, the P-38 was surpassed by other fighters, mainly the P-51. By September 1944, almost every Lightning groups in Europe were switched over to P-51 Mustangs. After the end of World War II, the remaining order for more than 1800 P-38s were cancelled and the last of the planes were retired from the US Air Force in 1949. Italy acquired 100 P-38L models between 1946 and 1952 and they flew in Italy until 1956. Most wartime P-38s were either sold or scrapped in the US. The sold ones were popular in air races after the war. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.